Hi, I'm Fran with Stampendous, and we're continuing our fabulous Friday fun watercolor series. Lesson number 121, and we're going to be featuring a lot of these fun little furry and even some feathered friends here throughout the month of August. We'll start by stamping uh, here with our thankful kitty. And the way these have been designed gives you lots of mix and match combinations. So start by stamping the kitty and then you can decide what you want to stamp in his little paws. And this just fits in front. And we also have some fun little glasses, which are a separate stamp, which means you can add them to any one of your different cats. So let's add them over here. You can see through the clear to line them up. <laughs> on this one, you can see, uh, well, let's see. On this one, I drew a little wobbly line across uh, to make a tabletop. And on this one, I think it was fun to do some little wobbly lines to create a little bit more of a vignette. And I'm just doing this freehand, wobbly kind of fits the look I'm going for. And I'm sure you can manage something like that with a nice, um, this is an 05 micron pen. Okay, I've made puddles of all the colors that I need and we're ready to start painting. And I will make only a few comments and most of it we'll just do fast forward. So on this first one, I wanted to do a technique that we did at the very beginning, a free flow, wet on wet technique. And to do that, we get water and then a touch of paint and then move it around a little bit. So that's giving us this dramatic sky back here. So first, some clean water and the little lines kind of give me a, a frame. So I'm getting it nice and wet. And then I'm getting very intense, this time the phthalo blue. And we're going to just touch it along the edge and let the water Kind of move it around. While that's drying, we'll do the background on this one. I did this bold swash of the gamboge color here, and pretty intense color on my brush. And then I'm going right to the scarlet. While I've got that intense scarlet, I see I here I had the little coffee mug, and here we've got a different drink. So we'll maybe do some little bit different. Oh, I like that pop of color there. We'll do some of this bold scarlet here. On this one, I quite liked the very subdued colors. And I've brought some of the black and gray tones from the upper portion of my palette where I mixed uh, my cool primaries together like we've been doing. And I brought some of it down here in the foreground. So adding some water. I want to test and get a really light shade here. And let's mix in a little bit of this other color. Actually, that's a good color here for my foreground. So a little bit of the blue with a bit of the gray. Maybe a little bit more of this green. a really light color that I did in the, the tabletop here. Well, let's use this color on the mug here. So this one was kind of fun to have those almost pastel colors. I like how this one dried that edge just a little bit there. Okay, our scarf is this kind of lime green with the yellow and the phthalo blue. Got some magenta, the rose and blue.
start with your light gray. Dryer brush should allow you to do a little bit more detail. And then this is an olive color that started from my yellow and marine blue. I mixed some olive here, but then I'm going to add some more of the black to really get that deeper, unusual color. Paint it in the right place here. <laughs> of tips about backgrounds. It's fun, simple way to just set it out um, on an interesting color or you might do an interesting little backdrop like this and again the soft colors are what make it uh, work quite nicely. And then here I wanted to mention a couple of fun new things I discovered about uh, the little plaids. So I had done these little test strips of plaids and again the key is to do matching colors to whatever you've painted and start with your lightest color and then add the darker colors letting each layer dry and then I realized that the pieces were too small to really fit my card so I discovered a very interesting possibility here, and I'm just going to trim that away. So here's a piece that's too short, but watch this. Cut it in half, and you now have plenty to go across the width of the card. So all your little pieces can be made into some fun variations. Next, I've stamped some of our furry friends from the Critters Christmas, and I'm just going to give you a couple of tips about the backgrounds, and then you could have some fun trying it on your own. These are all techniques that we've done before. So to do a soft, uh, sort of a puffy cloud background, these little uh, characters don't have to be limited to fall or winter, of course. So try doing some little vignettes of a blue sky if you want uh, a nice sunny day. And if you want more of a wintry sky, I'm going to get a bit of this brown or black actually to gray out my blue. Same way you can do bright color grass 
or more muted tones. To do the sky and be able to do the star, do, we'll do some of this blue gray here. And I'm just going to leave open areas of white around the star. This is the simplest way. And we'll make this a little bit more of a snow scene by simply doing some blues down here for snow as well. I'll use some of my pre-mixed different shades of browns. And the trick here is to be able to get some of that detail by having a drier brush. And I think it's easiest to first do some soft washes and then come back with some more detail on top of that. that you can hold a finer line with your brush. A little bit lighter color. So once your background sky is dry, it's safe to come in with some clean yellow here, a drier brush. Okay, you can take a little more time and build up a few more layers as you like. Here I wanted to show you how fun it was to take the owls and just do a sepia tone. If you did the whole thing in the browns and just different shades of one color of brown, you get a very nice uh, sepia look. And I will um, actually just add a little bit more color here to the, uh, the hats and scarves on these and that will be a contrast to the the sepia tone, but I think you can see once you have some brown mixed up um, that you can start with light shades and go to darker ones and uh, I'll just do a little bit here and there just to show you the idea. Lift it if it gets a little bit too dark. But that, could, that could be a real quick and easy way. And if we want just a little pop of color, then we'll do a little bit of that with the hats. This set has the branches in it, and you can see I stamped them from both sides here to create a whole um, tree backdrop. To finish off this card, I decided to add some little washes of brown uh, to this backdrop, and that added some interest. And this one I did all in sepia tone, and I embossed the message with detail white on the red paper. Now we'll do some quick stamping with our little terriers here and you can see how you can stamp them uh, by himself but on this one we did the packages in the front so I just wanted you to see how we would stamp that first use our little cutout sticky pattern here to cover it and then we can overlap it and decide where it looks just about right. Okay. You 
you miss a little bit, you can take your permanent pen and touch it up. Okay, and then you can paint your little terriers, whatever different colors. And we've done a lot of the browns and things before. And so we'll just do a little bit of this fast forward and you can see how we develop the colors. I had done this little uh, plaid and it was very small little test panel but I decided that if I were to let's see cut it in half it might be just the thing I need to finish off a nice card so take a look at some more of our gallery and enjoy some more painting.